Hi, Mark. Hello. Okay, so let's bring the meeting to order and do a roll call. Um, Michelle? Are you here? I see you. <laughs> Mark, you're here. Hello. Um, I'm here, sorry. Regina, that's okay, Regina. Yeah. And Tom. Yep, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Um, so our agenda today, so I think we should start with a little round table of who we are because we don't know each other very well and I think it would be a great start. So who would like to kick it off? Um, I guess I'll start then. Uh, hi, I'm Tom Seidenberg. I'm the Conservation Commission uh, designee. Uh, I'm also the chair of the CONCOM. Michelle? Um, I'm, I'm Michelle Vasquez. I've been on the Finance Committee for about 12 years, and um, I'm here to now participate with the CPA and see what I can add to it. <laughs> okay. How about Mark? My uh, name's Mark Grinchkowski. Uh, I've been on the REC committee for 10 years, maybe. I don't know. I was trying to figure it out uh, earlier today. But um, uh, I'm uh, taking uh, over for, for Wynn uh, for the CPA REC uh, uh, representative. Regina? Hi, Regina Brown. I represent the planning board for this committee. Um and hey, it gives us something to do once every month on a Thursday night. <laughs> I'm going to ask Kelly. I see she's here. Would you like to introduce yourself, Kelly, in case others haven't met you? Sure will. Hi, everybody. Kelly Dolan, uh, Assistant Town Administrator, um, here to oversee anything uh, that you guys might have questions on or bring questions forth. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. And I'm Marilyn Laghi. I'm on the Housing Authority. I've been on for about at least four years, so I'm probably up for re renewing next year. And that's what brought me to the CPA. So my uh, my thing is housing. It's a tough one, I know. And um, you may hear me spout off all about low-income housing from time to time. That's what I do. Um, okay, next up, uh, the meeting minutes. So did everybody get a copy? I did. Would someone like to make a motion to approve those minutes? Um, before we do, I just have one comment on the minutes. Sure. Um, so the minutes don't say that Wynn Clark was present, but he was present. So uh, I would make a motion to approve the minutes with that edit. OK. Uh, would anyone like the second motion? I don't think I was present at the last meeting. This would be May. Oh. We're, we're, we're trying to do catch up here. I was there for that. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, and I was like, no, we're going that far back. So uh, so we're at May. Uh, would anyone like the second the motion? Sure, second. And we do a roll call on Zoom, right? Um, so, Michelle? You can raise your hand. I can't hear you. Sorry, I have to abstain. I wasn't part of the meeting. Oh, that's... That was before I brought it. I was really okay. okay. Um, Tom? Oh, you already said. Um, yes. So that leaves out Mark as well, I would assume. Yep. Uh, Regina? Yes. Okay, and I agree as well. So I hope that suffices for approving the minutes. Um, next up is public comment. Is there any public comment? Yeah, I just wanted to pipe in and say that, um, well, Mark, first of all, thanks for stepping in for on behalf of REC. Um, and I wanted to just offer any support that you, you know, whenever you come across questions or anything like that. I'm happy to help. My my sort of specialty was um, outreach, um, trying to get the community more and more involved in CPA, trying to solicit good projects. Um, you know, I was focused on rec, but uh, we had some other really good projects in the last year. Um, and I also have a couple of 
pieces of material that I could hand off to whoever um, will be handling this. But the um, the presentation at annual town meeting um, is an important thing that obviously we had to do and make sure that we were really prepared and concise with that. Um, so I can talk with whoever wants to talk to, to me about that and hand over the PowerPoint files. Um, and we also had a flyer for the last two years that, you know, towards the same end, trying to make sure that we were as clear as, as we could be. Um, and, you know, we had pretty good results in the last, last couple of town meetings. Um, so yeah, uh, communicating this, this stuff out to the community is really important. And we're also, or you're also, um, by law and needing to have public, um, a public, uh, I guess it's a public hearing, right? Where at least once a year, mm -hmm. uh, where you go through, uh, CPA projects and, and just, you know, put all the information out there as you can, as much as you can. Um, so all those sort of things, um, like I said, community outreach was my thing. So, um, if anybody wants any help on that front, I'm happy to you know, help hand it off. Well, I'd be glad to secure the documents for now. If you like. Sure, I think I'll you... send them your way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Wynn. Sure. Um, you know, our next two items, one is the admin fees and the other is the draft procedure manual. And I'm wondering if anybody has a preference, which one we talk about first. Because in kind of in hindsight, we might want to look at the draft procedure manual before we talk about the admin fees. That works for me. Okay. Um, so the draft manual, the procedure manual is 29 pages. I'll, I'll be honest with you folks, I was grateful to receive it because I had no clue how to go about all this stuff and that was on the back of my mind that we needed something like this to really focus us. So I read through it. I, um, you know, from my lack of experience in in being on a CPA, I would say that it's a it's a very good manual. Um, I'm curious if anybody has uh, comments, feels that anything is missing or should be added or changed in that document. I mean, I read the document. Um, obviously, it's my first go with the uh, CPA, so. I thought it was very, very helpful, and there was a lot of really good information. So at this point, I'm sure I, I'm not in any point to critique it, but I think it's a great place to start. Great. Yeah, yeah, I agree with, with what Michelle just said. I, I read through it. I thought it was pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah. It's a nice uh, guide for us moving forward. Um, the sample documents at the end, I think, will also be helpful, uh, so we don't need to reinvent the wheel on any of those things. So yeah, I think it's it's very good. And if, if we need to vote to approve it, I'm happy to do that. Um, any other comments about the document? Regina, how about you? I know being on the planning board, you probably have a lot of experience with process. Um, and I don't, um, not to put you on the spot if you hadn't had a chance to go through it. No, I did go through it. The only thing, and it's just a thought, okay, would be, if we sent it off to the Community Preservation Coalition, coalition that kind of oversees all CPA to see if there's anything in there that they go, no, you're going the wrong direction. That That is my only thought. And I don't even know if that's possible. I think it is. Um, but here's what I'd like to do. I would like to take a vote whether to accept it tonight and then I, I'll I'll send it off to the coalition. Um, and then if we need to make edits, we could do that at a future meeting. Sounds good to me. Yep, agreed. Would anyone like to make? Um... So I'll make a motion to accept okay. with the premise that we will have CPC overseers review it. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm I'll second that motion. And then roll call, Michelle? Yay. Tom? Yay. Regina? Yes. Mark? 
Yes. And I agree. Yes. That's good. So the second document was um, whether we should work with the town to have them do the administration. And um, the, I'll be honest, the document I sent you, sent you said an admin request letter, but it really is a full email from Kate Hodges <laughs> when I looked at it tonight, um, describing the work and how she came to the cost of that. Um, so, you know, she it came out to $6,000 a year. And quite honestly, I don't even know what our admin fees are at this point. I haven't seen a, our final budget from the end of the fiscal year. And it's it's very hard to make a final decision without really knowing how much um, budget we have to work with on an annual basis for this. I recall. Was so, the admin fees like, what was it? Five or 10%? 5%. 5%. What's 5%. in the fund? So we really, we would need to find out, A, how much money we have. And the other thing, and I think we talked about a little, that the load, the lift, is not going to be the same month over month over month. That's true, yes. So, um, you know, we would want whoever, if we're paying someone hourly, we don't want them to expect a flat. I agree you know, with if, that. It should be paid on the hours. Yeah. No, I would say, yeah, the only way I would approve this is if it's based on actual hours work, not a, not like a flat fee, because it's going to fluctuate, you know, month to month, obviously. So to, so to answer the question about how much money we have, I'm looking at the spreadsheet um, that we got for, I think it was fiscal year 23, um, in the December meeting, December 23 meeting, um, if I'm reading the spreadsheet correctly, uh, we received uh, $8,600 of CPA revenue designated for the administrative account with a state distribution of $1,700. Um, so, you know, call that approximately 10 grand. Uh, it's not entirely clear to me if that 10 grand would be every year, but that certainly covers the 6,000 in the email that we, that you shared, Marilyn. Right. Yeah. So, so I, th I think we can afford it. Um, you know, I'm happy to share my screen if you folks want to see what I'm looking at. Let me do that. Oh, screen sharing is disabled. Uh, let me see if I can. Turn that off. Uh, pause recording. Screen share. Okay, Tom, you should be able to do it. Okay, let's see here. Okay, can you see the spreadsheet? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm looking at this column J. Uh, I think, so this says CPA rev revenue so i think that means that we received eighty six hundred dollars designated for the administrative uh, account and i believe this yeah this is fiscal year 2023 funds collected and plus the uh, 1750 uh, state distribution all right so yeah, so so I, I think I think that estimate um, from Kate is we're we're good for that. Um, mm -hmm. If anything, it's probably on the high side because I know she tends to be conservative. So um, I have a feeling it'll come in hopefully less than that, unless we have a lot of activity. You know, if we have a lot of proposals that have to get tracked and uh, projects right. moving forward. I mean, that's that's really where the uh, time is would start adding up above and beyond like the normal, you know, doing the agendas, the meetings and dealing with emails and the website. I agree. Uh, so uh, 
so I'm not sure that, that, that this estimate actually is own. so looking at this bulleted list, what there's there's a dozen things on the on the duties list and it's estimated at 12 and a half hours a month. So develop and post the agendas, call that a half an hour. Listening to the recordings and writing the minutes, that's as long as our minutes, uh, sorry, as long as our meetings plus some. Like it definitely takes at least as long as the meeting to listen to it again and write the minutes. And it's, it's certainly more than that. So we're probably at three hours between those two things. Right. Because some of our minute, some of our meetings are going to be long. Um, oversee the web page, you know, another half an hour, de depending on load. Uh, review, review and triage emails. And maybe we're at we're at five. But some of these are potentially long tasks. Correct. Like reviewing reviewing an application. If it's a significant application, that's that's many hours of work. So, that's right. So I don't know that, that maybe 12 and a half hours averaged over the year, maybe that does make sense. But I, I do wonder if 12 and a half is too small. So th that would be my only comment looking at this list. Did I hear you, Tom? You think it might be too too few hours? Yeah. On a monthly basis or an annual basis? So, so the estimate shows, shows it as 12 and a half hours per month as the estimate. Yes. Um, I, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. That might be on the low side. Um, okay. Because yeah, I, I can imagine just managing the meetings as far as the minutes and uh, posting the agendas that sort of thing it, at a minimum is five hours would be my estimate. Uh, just, I, for that, just for that piece. I, I was wondering about the, um, the union component. It says that, um, you know, it's, it's factoring it in and then it's to bring a 32 hour employee up to 40. Um, so that would be eight hours. Yeah. Uh, but then they're talking about 12 and a half hours. So that's four and a half hours more than 40. So that would be overtime. So is that time and a half? And then as a union employee, are you allowed to do that? And on those months that we would require significant overage, are they even able to do that? Um, it sounds like it's more like a contract thing. But if it's four extra hours a week and we go on the four weeks a month, that's 16 hours. Right. So we wouldn't hit overtime if, if it's spread out over that time. Correct. Well, and I also it, think the town administrator assistant, I think, would probably take over some of the time if, if we were looking at overtime. I, I know they're very, um, very conscientious of people going into overtime. Yeah, I can jump in here and say that that part wouldn't happen. Um, also, uh, the hours, just like, you know, Board of Health Assistant, they're based uh, off of some some months are in, in the weeks are obviously higher than others, but it's an average at the end of the day. So it's it's incredibly hard to pinpoint it anyways, but I there would be no overtime involved in that because the person reports to me, so I can confidently tell you that. Can I add something real quick? Um is it okay if I do that? It's okay with me. Uh, so I, I don't know anything about uh, whatever arrangements are being made to pay the town, but it sounds like it might be a worthwhile idea. But I just wanted to remind everybody of what the other potential admin costs are. Yeah, thank you. You know, there's, um, we have the signage done, um, the, uh, the mail that has to go out for any um, public hearings, I think was a, I don't I don't remember how much it was, but it's many hundreds of dollars, I think, to do that. Um, so anyway, just keep in mind that there's there are definitely other administrative. Do we have last year's budget and the year before to compare? I have no numbers. Yeah, I, was, I was digging through the files that I have, and I, I didn't find another document that had like a more detailed breakdown. I know. 
I know we saw one in our meetings in the spring, uh, but I, I don't have that on my, uh, on my hard drive. So maybe it's in my email. Well, um, Michelle, I'm wondering if you're able to get a, uh, the fiscal year end from Cheryl. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure I can, uh, request something like that. Uh, okay. I'm just trying to think, uh, if I have the budget, the final budget saved on a USB that I would have had. So I'll go look for that and see if I can find that. And if I can, we'll. Okay. Yeah. So why don't, so. I'll, I'll talk to Kate about our concerns about the cost um, and why don't we table a vote for this until next meeting. Um, but I will say, I believe she said in the note about timing. So we really do want to make a decision in September so that it can get and go in front of a, the special town meeting vote or something to that effect. <laughs> Uh, if if I could add one quick thing, I um, was just checking my math here, and it looks like I was uh, doing it wrong. I was going by the twelve and a half hours per month versus what they were averaging for a forty hour per week employee, like bringing them up. So it was like apples to oranges thing. So you're right; there is plenty of room for for a person to, to do it across the month. Um, so it looked like it was a, 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 a potential 32 hour employee that was just going to take on the extra hours per week. Is that right? Well, extra hours per month, but, but if we look at that, if they were at 32 hours, they were adding 12. Now they're at 44. So it's, half, thir but. it's 32 hours a week. And it's over the course of a month, 12, it'd be months. 12 and a half. So that works out to be like, what, three hours a week? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So that's that's where my, my math Thank you. <laughs> making things confusing. So I'm trying to unconfuse it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm with you now. I've tracked it. Either way, I will talk, I'll take this to Kate and talk to her about that. So I, I guess one thing to note then would be with the with the no overtime thing that in any given week, this person, if they're a 32 hour employee, would not be eligible to work more than eight hours per week on this for us. Okay. In, well, in any given week. Oh, that's true. So being conscious about breaking up the time too. If there are a lot of contracts, you feel like you have a biz busy week of contracts, putting some of that work aside the following week right okay um one of the thing and i i'm sorry I, I should have added this to the agenda but as we're talking about admin fees we also have an invoice for the coalition for 875 dollars so that's i'm assuming is an annual expense that would come off of that admin fee and um we should make a vote on whether to pay that too as well. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, postpone the vote. Um, did, would anyone like to discuss the the actual invoice for the coalition? Um, yeah, I, I apparently don't know anything about it. So if you can tell me what yeah. it's for, that'd be great. So. Um, if anybody's had a chance to actually look at their website, they are our, they're, they're basically our Bible. This is where I'm going to reach out to have them look at the the uh, procedure manual. So um, it's a nonprofit organization that kind of helps all the CPAs in the state. And um, there is an annual membership fee of $875. So we received that um, invoice late July, just a couple of weeks ago. So what I'd like to do is is make a motion whether to accept that and then send it off to um, Cheryl for payment. Is this something that's been paid for in the past? Um, I would assume um, we've been in the coalition since we started. I but I've only I haven't even been on this board for a year, so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, does, like, does the coalition decides like just looking at our, our procedure manual and giving us, will they give us like advice as far as, you know, 
the wording of the language is wrong or you're missing this section or something mm -hmm. like that. And also, it's like if we have somebody that's making a proposal to us and we're kind of questioning it as far as, you know, does it meet the guidelines? Are they willing to provide some guidance to us? Not that I'm asking for legal guidance, but at least general stuff or point us in a direction that we would be able to kind of make a more uh, informative decision. When? Yeah, if it's okay, I just wanted to add in here that Stuart, Stuart's the guy, um, and he has, over the past few years, been extremely responsive, um, not just in terms of nuts and bolts, but I know anytime um, Linnea had questions or, you know, he, he was just, he was right there. So it's not like you send an email and it goes, goes into a hole. Um, you have an individual that you reach out to, and he's very responsive, and he's very much... He's very enthusiastic about the the initiative in general, so um, well worth the, the expense. Sounds good. Yeah, this is the same group that hosted the boot camp. Yes. They do that yearly, and it, it's free to charge for anyone who's a CP, CP, whatever a member. And um, I keep calling it CPAC, sorry. And uh, it, it, like the amount of information and the encouragement to call was just fantastic i think 850 is is a very reasonable for the guidance they'll they'll provide so would anyone like to make a motion to vote on whether to pay the invoice i will make a motion to pay the invoice or CPA. I will, i'll second that motion and a roll call. Uh, Michelle? Yes. Mark? Sure. Yes. Regina? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. Um, well, this is going faster than I expected. Um, for, for that last thing, is that like a annual dues then yeah. for the membership? Yes. So would that be considered like an admin cost moving forward? Exactly. I'm assuming that's exactly where it comes from. You can't imagine it coming anyplace else. And that's why I thought, oh, we got to bring that up too. Because as Wynn described the different admin costs, the signage and mailing, we also have this as well. So. <clears throat> And Michelle, if I may, if you're able, when you're getting some reports, so Michelle, any document uh, showing what expenses were paid out of admin for last year would be helpful. Oh, I absolutely can ask for that stuff. I'm sure we can get that. Yeah. Actual expenditures and what we were budgeted also, because I was just looking through the draft budget that I had still saved. And I couldn't find the CPA budget on it real quick, just scrolling through, but it's like about 80 some pages. So. <laughs> But I'm sure I can. I'm sure I can get that information very easily. Great, thank you. Um, next up, <laughs> ideas for next step. <laughs> so you know, we, I think we're getting our mechanic down here, and that's great. Um, how to do things, the process, who's who. Uh, but you know, we're lacking applications, and we're probably lacking on outreach those two areas especially and i'm curious if anyone has any ideas on what we should do next i think it would be good just to kind of go through our next meeting like what all the steps are as far as the process just understanding the like for me i'm a newbie so i know i know i other than reading the manual i really know little to nothing about the process i think it would just be good to just do a very quick overview of applications are due by this date. We have until, you know, we're supposed to, you know, discuss these things, have the people in, make, you know, start debating or deliberating on, you know, what we think should be done. Um, and then when we have to have final decisions. So we kind of like already know where our due dates are so we can make sure we plan accordingly. And then, um, the next thing would be is how do we get the message out to people? Um, do we have the town, you know, somehow on the town website or something at town meeting or, or 
when they do staff meetings with the departments, like try to, you know, say, hey, we've got this stuff. Do you know other people that are doing stuff? Because, you know, I'm sure DPW is hearing complaints about this, that, and the other thing and being able to tell people, hey, you know, maybe this is something you can consider if it falls under the correct guidelines. But um, yeah, we have to figure out how to like let people know there's money available. We just need to have the appropriate projects being presented. I mean, I know we've got some great members of different committees that definitely would have interest in those types of projects. So, um, and my other thing is, as I don't know if the uh, select board um, nominated another person, member at large. I know they were supposed to appoint somebody and I don't know if that happened or not. I'm not aware. Okay. That, yeah. But that, I that ha it hasn't appeared on their agenda um, since the lap, since, uh, since you were appointed, Michelle, so. Yeah, I know there was a discussion about it and they, and you know, um, I thought it was going to be on the last meeting, which was like, I think the eighth or something like that. Um, but I didn't watch the meeting, so, or check the agenda. But I think maybe we need to kind of, maybe when you talk to Kate, uh, Marilyn, yeah. you know, just mention like, hey, you know, we still have that open position, you know, if there's people interested, it'd be great to get more minds into this. You know, more minds, more thoughts, you know, more ideas. And are we still down um, a designee from Historical Commission as well? I, th I believe we are, yes. Okay. Um, any other feedback, comments, thoughts, the next steps? I think hey, when, quick, when uh, yeah, quick comment. Um, just along the same lines as what Michelle did, I promise I won't be coming all these meetings. Oh, uh, please um, do. But I, I think um, something we, I think, fell into a little bit too much in the past is that we, we kind of said, all right, the deadline, we did, there shouldn't be really a deadline for, um, proposals, I don't think. We should be uh, encouraging people to submit it all year round because, the you know, you can present a proposal at fall meeting or at springtown meeting. Um, and if we just sort of say, if we, we fell into the trap of putting a deadline for the springtown meeting, and I, I think, you know, there, there weren't as many proposals sometimes as there could have been. Um, and you know how it goes, you get a whole bunch of stuff at the same time and you get rushed. So I would encourage you to maybe set set up three or four um, initiatives where you invite the public, or it may, four maybe is too many, but a few times a year anyway, to really invite the public as a reminder that, you know, we're taking applications all year round. It takes time to really flesh these things out. And, to me, for an application to be uh, a good candidate, it has to be uh, shopped around town. It has to be, you, you have to really know that it's going to be a well-received thing. You can't just have one individual fill out an application. It, I mean, you could, but that's not really a great way to go about it because then you're, you're just inviting a, a town, a town meeting. Um, so to, to try to get people to understand that a good, a good project is one that's well publicized, uh, shopped around, has a demonstrated need, all those things are, are really important. It's not just about getting somebody from town to fill in an application. It's about, um, you know, getting it out there. So, um, you know, it's easy to think that you can fill out an application and throw it in there. Um, but I, I think there's just, there's more to it than that for for one that's worthy worthy of you know getting a vote i agree somewhat except for the timeline you know so anybody putting in an application has to be made aware of some sort of deadline to meet town meeting and well, to get to that town meeting yes yeah so so, so yeah encouraging them year round i agree just yeah. prefacing that you know when it will actually get to the town meeting just to give them that timeline but i yep. think earlier in lots in early is good because we can always send because then we have meetings with them they can shop around and then get a final um yeah. application completed in time yeah 
them. I mean, I think it's better to publicize an idea mm -hmm. for, for, for a few months rather than try to force it into town meeting and kind of rolling the dice. Mm -hmm. Mark? Uh, yeah, is Regina's oh. hand up? Or am, can yes. I go? Oh, yeah, you can yeah. go, Mark. Go ahead. Oh, all right. Thank you. Uh, so I was wondering, um, like, is the is the normal flow for if we were to um, have like an ideal situation, it would be somebody from the public that's not necessarily in any one of these feeder committees goes to one of those committee meetings that's like appropriate for it. Like if it's a rec related one comes to the rec committee meeting and then um, as the public like talks uh, or asks about it and then that sort of like spurs the discussion and rec can then assist this person in putting forth um, the CPA proposal and then it would kind of channel up, I guess in this case through through me to this committee and then would go or I guess what Wynn was saying, you can just as a member of the public, just fill out an application and submit it and it makes it um, just the same. There's no like kind of preferred path or anything like that. <laughs> It could be both. Um, one of the things, if if you you know people have time, and I wish there was a chat thing on the meeting that I could share this, but within the town website, under our area, there is a document from 2022 that, although it's out of date, it does give somewhat of what this conversation is about is a timeline and Correct. guidelines for submission. So. Um, I mean, nothing says we can't update and come up with something newer, but instead of reinventing the wheel, it's really good to have a wheel to start from. Yeah, the the other question that I had along those lines was with the, uh, the draft procedures manual here, it has the funding timeline thing, and I was gonna comment how that is like incredibly helpful um, seeing how it's all broken out. Uh, but it looks like that is, tailored to presenting only in the spring meeting. Uh, but if there's two meeting opportunities, should there be like, if we're accepting it year round or inviting year round, is it something where there's sort of like a two rolling deadlines where, you know, you're kind of mm -hmm. too late for the spring one, but you could still get it in for, you know, you'll have enough time. Yes. To prepare for, yes. Uh, and we've had, fall. we've had that happen with, um, I want to say it might have been the beach that, you know, they weren't quite ready. So let's, you know, I'll hit you on the next meeting. And that's more than acceptable. So, so it might help if we had a similar funding timeline that was tailored towards the fall uh, meeting uh, just to have an idea or, you know, I'm I'm thinking of how like when people buy a house and they're like, I want to close in four weeks. And you're like, that's not realistic. You know, how, <laughs> this is how long it actually takes. So to have like a, maybe an idea of like when the proposal comes in, you know, or maybe backwards out from the meeting, how many days or months you need in advance in general to, to make your uh, progress in, in time. Um, but I, I was loving the the timeline, having it there in that little spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, um, you know, if there was a second sort of cycle where it would be tailored to the fall meeting, um, that might be good. Do we have, do we always have a fall meeting? We have since I can recall, at least for the last 10 years. But I don't think we're required to have a fall meeting as we, versus we have to have the spring annual town meeting. Um, the special Correct. town meeting is more usually to wrap up some open end things. Usually it's like wrapping up um, like as far as the budget, like bills that come in after we've already closed out the year and it just shows up and it's back from the previous year. Um, and then there's usually a lot of other little miscellaneous items. So, I mean, we typically have one. But um, that might be something we want to draft into the manual as far as additional languages. We have two sets of deadlines, but the second one being, you know, special town meeting, it's based on if we actually have one. Um, you know, I don't know if we would be able, 
you know, this is not something I would know the answer to, or uh, I don't know if Kelly would, but, you know, if us doing a second round and having, you know, projects that we want to present, would that be enough to call a special meeting or if there needs to be other um, qualifications for that? Are you talking about this special meeting or are you talking about in the future? Just in the future, like if there gotcha. was nothing, nothing yep. else for a special meeting and we had, you know, proposals that came up that we want to approve, could we call, could we call the special meeting specifically just for those items if there's nothing else out there? Yeah, yeah you'd have to go to the select board for that, um, to ask for that permission. So, um, I mean, probably something that would be considered, but I, I couldn't say they vote yay or nay on it. Right. No, that's. I just didn't know if there were specific parameters that would generate a special town meeting. Got We've it. always had one because we always have past bills that come through that we need to get approved. And there's yeah. always a lot of other little small housekeeping things that they usually want to do, um, whether it's bylaws and stuff that they want to pass or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. By by nature, uh, majority of towns have special town meetings for exactly that, the quote unquote housekeeping. That's kind of the housekeeping rules and, and things are what we normally call it for that. And I'll note, I notice the timeline too, Mark. What I, what I notice about the timeline is that it takes a year. So, you know, July, September committee, people with their ideas are floating them to the committees. Um, and then it doesn't go to town meeting until May. Previous and work doesn't even begin really until June or August, actually. So I guess prefacing to folks that, it, you know, Worthy causes it, but it can take a year, regardless whether it came in in the fall or in the spring or what you know. When you say year, is that for the funding or till the project's completed? No, for funding to begin, funding letters and instructions don't go out until. If I look at this timeline, you have a town meeting in May, funding letters go out in June. And then project report. So, so you're really looking from July. You're starting in July, and you're ending in June of the following year, where it's been approved and it's gone out. So, if you know, say for example, we were doing something with a um, a late uh, fall town meeting, and we were trying to meet deadlines, they really still would need to approach us. Um, early spring when it's too late to get to the spring town meeting i guess is where i'm going okay. right and then you know if there's a a fall town meeting then they we could add it and, and so another way i guess if if this is all going to be consistent from a special town meeting um uh, it could maybe be you could not or you would expect your Funding letters and instructions approximately to May June. Yeah. Uh, so, like one month after the town meeting. Is that right? May to June? Yeah. If I, based on this timeline, so if we were to take a fall one, yes. But it could go up. It could go out within one to two weeks after town meeting. I think it's, we have to like issue the funding letter once it gets approved within right. whatever the, the four weeks or something from. Whenever mm -hmm. or six weeks, whatever the time, the deadline is, but I'm sure it's, you know, we have a sex, a set date that we have to issue it by, but I'm sure if we're expediting this, you know, if, if it gets approved, there's no reason why the funding letter can't go out right away to me. So it, it might help having um, the, the timeline sort of center on the annual town meeting as like the ultimate deadline. Like that's when you have to have your stuff together by because uh, that's when it's voted and then like work backwards you know however many i'm not going to do the math but like however many days you know like 30 to 60 days you're going to need to have the project appropriations or the committee recommendations um you know 60 to 90 is the interviews and site visits so that way whenever you have your idea or proposal you know kind of where you sit in this um theoretical um path you know and if you're like way behind the ball you'll see it right away because it'll be like oh i'm supposed to be in the recommendations phase and i haven't even uh submitted an application so i mean we we tried to have applications in by february 
um, because, and you have to back out from the annual town meeting by about a month because the warrant has to be reviewed and accepted and printed and all that. Um, it has, you know, it takes um, the select board probably two meetings to vet through all the uh, warrant items. So it has to be, you know, th there's just a lot of long intermittent steps um, and a lot of them hinge on the select board meeting and the select board only meets periodically. So those those things don't happen as quickly as you might expect or like them to, if that makes sense. And when, um, so you know, the timeline on, that we're looking at, the deadline is the end of November for the Springtown meeting. So then it can go off and be vetted, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. meeting with other committees and all of that before it ever gets to um, the warrant. Yeah. Right. The applications had to be in by like November 30th. Then yeah. we have to vet everything and we have until like the beginning of February or something to make our, our approvals of what we think is correct. So between November to February, we do the vetting and whether it means, you know, looking at the site reviews and stuff like that from what I recall. But yeah, we had to have it done by February in order for usually the um, select board needs it by the end of March and stuff in case there's questions between the two, you know, between that time frame. So that's why I kind of like, I think next meeting would be good to just let's go over what the deadlines are that are posted in the, in the book, you know, and think about the suggestions Mark made about, you know, making other deadlines maybe. So if there is a special town meeting, we might be able to squeeze a few more projects in, if, you know, especially if we've got the time and the money for it, let's do it. You know, let's get this stuff going and under underway because it takes a while once, you know, once they get the funding, now they got to buy all the project, the things, do whatever they need to do before they get everything underway. And then, you know, then we do the final inspections. I agree. That sounds good. Um, anything else? So the, the other aspect of next steps is actually soliciting the projects. And correct me if I'm wrong, Wynn, so it's, I haven't been on the committee that long, that most of the projects that the committee has approved in the past have been from town uh, groups, right? From either from one of the other committees, recreation in particular and historical, seems to me have requested most of the projects to date. Is, is that not correct? And so in terms of outreach, isn't it kind of on, on us uh, who are designees from other committees to basically bring this question back to our own committees um, and say, yeah, yeah. I would say, want to do? And, and similar to what Mark was saying before, if, if you are, you know, if people are showing interest in bringing things forward, then probably best to bring it through the committee, you know, by default getting committee endorsement, um, but more importantly, getting committee support and in putting the application together um, because, you know, every, I would do a bunch of Facebook posts and things like that and all well and good, but you're also going to get a lot of, you guys should do this. You guys should do that. Um, it's not your committee's job to, to propose anything. It's your job to vet them and solicit them and make sure the processes are all followed and make sure people know, know what's what. Um, but you just have to make sure people don't expect you to you know, take off running based on, you know, I think you should do a dog park. Go do it. You know, it doesn't. It can't work like that. <laughs> right, um, but you know, if I if I just look at it through the concom lens for a moment, um, we've had recent discussions in concom about what lands that the concom owns or has conservation restrictions on. But but more so, my my thoughts are towards the land that concom owns. I'm not sure if under CPA rules and regulations, CONCOM could use CPA money to do, for example, build a parking lot to make a conservation area accessible for hiking, right? Um, we have a you know, pretty big parcel uh, off, you know, close to the Ballard Hill parcel, but further down on 117, um, there's basically no access. Um, you know, it'd be great. It'd be great to make access. Uh, the town just acquired uh, 
via gift an adjacent parcel to the CONCOM's existing parcel. So there's now um, a 50 acre parcel there that's you know preserved for all time. It'd be great if we could make trails and make that accessible to the townsfolk. Um, yeah, there was I mean, also- Certainly a rec project if it's not a- That's what I, I right. was just thinking. I'm like, I'm thinking this falls under recreation. I feel like um, it might actually be on the agenda in nine minutes. <laughs> and then there's a there's a very specific project um the developer of eagle ridge many years ago said that the town could use the last remaining eight thousand bucks in the escrow account to build a bridge over a stream um to en enable a, a trail network in the in the open space that was part of that development it's certainly going to cost more now to build that bridge than it would have um, like eight years ago when they gave, gave us permission. We have that 8,000 bucks. It's essentially dedicated to this purpose. We probably would need a little bit more money than, than that to actually do it. Um, one of the Eagle Ridge residents came to CONCOM over the winter uh, and reminded us that, that this project exists because there's nobody on CONCOM who is there now. Uh, who was there then when, when this agreement was made. So um, I, I definitely think that the CONCOM should be filling out an application for monies on that and doing the due diligence. That's something that's on our, on our list. It's just, you know, we went, we, we went through the whole no agent and then lost our agent problem. Well, we've, we've solved that problem. So now I think we actually have time to, to look at some of these things to enable all of the CONCOM lands with CPA money to be more accessible to the, mm -hmm. to the public. I think that would be a good use of this money if it's, if it's legit, if it's a legit use. Oh, do you think have some research, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, do you Sounds think there like... should be something that should be on the agenda for the next meeting that we should discuss some of these items? I mean, like, you know, acquisition, creation, preservation, rehab, and restoration of land for recreational use. You know, would your parking lot fall, you know, like have a discussion on these things. And, yeah, for uh, sure. I think we should put it on the agenda. I think also, you know, so I'm just looking at it right now through the CONCOM lens, but, you know, having read some of the, the stuff about CPA, um, clearly there's also an intent that committees like ours should be squirreling money away, putting it in the reserve to do larger projects. And I think our committee should talk about what larger projects we might want to save up for. Um, we need them presented. Yeah. So. And that's the challenge too. I mean, we, we kind of need to be the evangelists of these things, but we need to have people actually Put the application in and be the project managers not us so it's kind of a tricky yeah. balance when yeah um i was also going to throw out there um especially to you mark that um you know we we had to table the the tennis court project last year because there were there are a lot of unknowns there as to what's under those courts um but what we haven't explored yet is a bonded project um, and I, I'm not sure 100% how that works, but my loose understanding is that if um, if it's part of the proposal, you can propose, you know, say those tennis courts were going to actually cost $250,000, you could sort of pre-commit rec to putting in $50,000 over five years of CPA money to, to make that project happen. Um, Michelle, forgive me, I'm not a financial, <laughs> the terminology is all wrong there, I'm sure, but you get the idea. Um, so, you know, those, if our entry point at 1%, you know, sort of prohibits a lot of big, big project thinking, but just keep that in mind that um, there are potentially other avenues to explore for some of these bigger projects. I know you had um, uh, you had said before because I remember you mentioning this in the rec uh, meeting. Uh, are the funds available 
sooner than later? Like, is it like an upfront loan? And then do you, is there interest involved or do you have to wait for the money to accrue over those five years and then you get to do the project? No, I think again, based on my loose understanding, it's, it's like a mortgage sort of, um, you get the money up front, you do the project and you pay on, pay it off. With future CPA money, is that how it's done? What's that? Is it paid off with future CPA money? I believe so. Yeah, future, you vote on committing future years of CPA payments. All right. I don't remember reading anything about like no, doing me things, I mean, obligations I, and stuff. So I, I'm just. Ask. Yeah. Um, I, I think Kate has some experience with that. Um, yeah. And I, I know she mentioned it to me once that it's it's there's ways to do it, but obviously we never got that far. Um, but I know that Rec might, you know, be interested. Yeah, I, I know that Rec is interested in getting those courts done. So that's going to take more money than you're going to be able to get in one CPA year. Right. Um, there are also other ways too. So yeah, I did read that we could use state grants in addition to CPA money. So there's that area and, and any grants, I guess that's another yeah. avenue. And then, yeah, um, can be yeah, and I started as... to read up on bonding bonds. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically a loan, but I don't necessarily, I'm not quite sure if it's a loan to the CPA money in general, but some other outside our box type of loan. I'm not quite sure. I didn't get that far. That's um, the kind of thing that Stuart could give you very, yes, exactly. Of... Right now, we don't really have the money to be thinking about the big right. projects, right? It, not in that pool, but if we've got grants and other monies from other in, um, areas, you could definitely play a part. So, uh, does anyone have anything else? Uh, Marilyn, I, not to put one more thing on you, but is it possible when you're up the town hall to ask to have that 29, 30 page document uploaded to our site? on the town page oh okay i like that idea yeah um, I mean, if we voted on it as a public document you know mm -hmm. there's no reason it can't go out there even if we have to tweak it down the road but right okay thank you i like that yep i think the whole that whole uh left side bot needs a good look over anyways and i haven't quite done it yet <laughs> to look at some of it but okay. I think this is a good start. <laughs> once it goes up, um, it, and if if you guys, I don't know who's on social media and who's not, but I mean, I'll I could share the link on social media, or the town even has a Facebook site to share it, just to you know start promoting it and say, hey, go out there. I mean, most people when you say there's a 30 page document, they're gonna go, oh no, I'm not reading that, but. You know, who knows? Maybe someone will in their own time. But if we don't tell them we put it out, they're never going to know. And even if you just preface, you know, with a summary of what the document is, too, so people know where to get it. Absolutely. Yeah. And those that are interested in projects, would we would encourage them to read it. Absolutely. Um, do we have anything else? It would be nice to know like what our balance summary is, but I actually I'll find that out when I talk to Cheryl about what our budget was and our actual expenses. I'll ask her also what um what we have for funds available in our account at this point and if there's anything that's supposed to be expended, you know, expected um up front, you know, or when the state's gonna fund us. Right. And there might be some outstanding um invoices from some of the other projects. I'm not sure. Um, I, you know, it's a moving target, right? When it comes to invoicing. So get as close as you can. <laughs> well, doesn't, when we do the funding, we do, we actually, are we the ones that are actually responsible for paying the vendor invoices or does, do we grant that to whomever and they're responsible for it? I think we are correct. We need so to look at them, I believe, before we send them over to finance. Got yeah. it. So it's not like we're like, you know, you got your funding. Here's your hundred thousand dollar check, and hopefully, you no, pay your no, they they have to submit an invoice to get the money. 
So we yeah, basically one, have a restricted fund for them and we right. pay out of it till we're done with it, with whatever. Right. In. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I believe we review it and then it goes to oh, Kate. Go yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Once a project's accepted, it goes through the, the same procurement process as any. As any, any town project would be. Right. Yeah. Or non-town too. I mean, we could, yeah. in, you know, at some point come across a project that's not town owned. Some historic house or something. Anything else? Anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Um, Michelle? Yes. Mark? Yes. Regina? Yes. And Tom? Yep. And I, me, yes. Um, so we'll meet again the third Thursday. It is the third Thursday, yes, of September. <laughs>